Welcome to this video, great to have you on board. In this video, we'll dive into Firebase Cloud Functions. I'll explain what that actually is, what, what these are, and of course, we'll also see a practical example. So let's dive right into it. So what are Cloud Functions, Firebase Cloud Functions? Firebase Cloud Functions are all about serverless event-driven code. Well, that's a nice phrase, but what does it actually mean? It means that you can put some code in your Firebase project. Firebase, as you probably know, is a provider, is a service where you can host your own backend or where you can build your own backend without writing too much server-side code. So cloud functions actually are a part of Firebase where you can write your own server-side code and where you can specify when this code should get executed. So let's have a closer look. What does serverless mean? Well, Firebase overall is all about being serverless. It means that you don't have to manage any servers. Of course, there still are servers involved because it's code running somewhere in the cloud, but you don't have to provision, manage, configure these servers. Instead, you got all the environment working out of the box and you don't have to worry about updating your software on your servers, uh, installing security patches or in general securing your servers. You still will have to worry about writing a secure application and any code you write obviously should be secure. But when it comes to setting up these servers and configuring the network, that is all taken care of. Another advantage of this serverless approach, which just to make this really clear, is not just a cloud function thing, but the idea behind Firebase in general. So another advantage is the infinite scalability, of course. Since you focus on your business logic and you don't have to manage any server resources, you don't have to make sure that you provision enough servers for this next Black Friday sale you're hosting on your website. Instead, the server resources which are provisioned behind the scenes will automatically scale up and down and you only pay for what you need, which of course is a great advantage and very cost efficient. And finally, with cloud functions now specifically, we have a clear separation of concerns. We don't have to write all the logic we typically have to write on a server on our own. The router, the database access module, all these things which do utility tasks for us, we don't have to do that. We focus on our business logic and we can really separate the different parts of the business logic and build a microservice like um, backend where we really have individual parts doing their thing without having to clue them together. Now that's the serverless part. What does the event-driven thing mean here? It means, and that now is uh, typical or that is a thing uh, Cloud Functions really is based on, that your code runs upon certain events. So you decide when code should get executed. Now that of course has a couple of advantages. We got predictable executions, for example. We decide when our code runs, so we always know when it's going to run. Typical events would be like someone uploaded a file or maybe even someone sent a HTTP request to a certain endpoint defined by you. And we'll see uh, all possible triggers in a second. Now, another advantage of this event-driven approach, of course, is we don't have any idle time. We don't pay for our code to run and wait for incoming requests if there are none. Instead, cloud functions only run when they need to and we only pay for when they run. Behind the scenes, what happens is that Firebase will provision the environment the cloud function requires on demand so that you don't have to pay for any resources you don't need. And that is the third point here, that the code environment only exists when needed and you don't have to manage that. Now, the last thing, of course, the code. Well, you only write what you need. You focus on your business logic. I touched on this when I talked about the separation of concerns. So we focus on the business business logic. We can use third-party libraries. We can absolutely do that. You don't have to write everything on your own. You can build a normal JavaScript project because that's the third point for Firebase Cloud Functions, at least at the point of time recording this, only Node.js, so server-side JavaScript, is supported as a language. But that shouldn't be a big issue because chances are, if you're working with Firebase, you might be coming from a Node.js background anyways, or you already used JavaScript in a browser environment, so then at least some of the things are already familiar. 
So these are cloud functions. Now let's talk about these events that trigger your functions. What are possible event sources? Well, we got a couple of possible sources. One is Firestore, which is Firebase relatively new storage. They always had this real-time database. And a couple of weeks ago, or months, I guess now, they actually launched a new database you can use for essentially bigger amounts of data. If your application scales up, it offers advantages over the real-time database. Now, the core thing is Firestore is a NoSQL database. And you can listen to on create, update, delete, or in general, write events. On write simply means either create, update, or delete. So whenever new data is written, for example, your function can execute and you can do something. A uh, typical example would be that you validate or transform incoming data. Let's say a user enters the username and in the cloud function, you then want to check if it matches one of your blacklisted words. And if that would be the case, you could delete the entry after it had been added. So you can add some extra logic that runs after it has been written to the database for the first time. It's the same for the real-time database. It's also supported. You got the same hooks there and of course the same example. So really the, the, the same functionality for either database you chose. Now, you're not limited to database triggers, though. As you know, or as you might know, Firebase also offers an authentication module where you can let Firebase manage the whole off flow and all the complexity that is involved with authenticating users. So here for authentication, we can also listen to the creation or deletion of users and execute code when it happens. An example here would be that a user signs up, so on create is triggered, and then we send a welcome mail. Now in the past without cloud functions, that was pretty much impossible to achieve. Now you can simply listen to the user was created event and then run some code where you use a provider like let's say MailChimp or something like that, that sends out the email. We also have some Google Analytics related triggers. Now here I have to say I'm talking about Google Analytics for Firebase, which is an integrated product that builds up on Google Analytics. And there you have so-called analytic events, which you can define on your own, um, which you can then trigger in the browser. So in the client side code, send to your server and store some information. And now with uh, cloud functions, you can also listen to such an event and not just store it in the analytics database where it will end up anyways, but also run some code. For example, write some extra information to your own database if you wanted that, send a notification to yourself like, hey, another user bought my product, something like that. We also got Crashlytics, another service offered by Firebase. This is a service that is um, mostly relevant to mobile apps, so Android, iOS apps, and you can then embed the Firebase SDK and basically report issues or crashes through the internet to your backend so that you have a live update of crashes and you don't have to wait for customers to write reviews. Um, there you also can listen to crashes or issues which were detected and then run some code. Here you could also write some extra data to the database or send a notification to yourself, uh, maybe saying, yeah, uh, now there has been another crash of this type. Um, I want to get an email, something like that. Cloud storage is another very useful uh, event source. Cloud storage is the Firebase product where you can store files. You can easily upload them to cloud storage through the Firebase SDK, but you can also upload them differently. And actually that is one example I'll dive into in the next video, I guess. So here you can listen to on change events, which occur whenever an object is added, for example. Now, whenever such an object is added, this would run, and then you could execute some code taking that object into account. For example, a typical example would be image optimization. Let's say a user uploads an image and you want to create three different versions in three different sizes. Now you can easily do that with the cloud storage trigger, which basically tells you when a file is added, then you check if that file is an image. And if it is, you simply resize it into the three formats you want to have. PubSub is another service offered by Firebase. It's uh, basically a service which allows you to um, send a message to which you then can listen from, from other services uh, in your Firebase environment. And 
whenever you publish such a message, the on publish trigger gets triggered and you can use that to, to then do something additional, maybe write some extra information to the database again. Now, one super useful and versatile event source is HTTP. HTTP obviously is no Firebase service. I'm talking about the normal, well, web here. Firebase Cloud Functions have one cool feature. You can listen to an HTTP request. That means you can essentially build your own endpoints, API endpoints with Firebase. In the past, before we had Cloud Functions, this was not possible. If you wanted to send REST, so normal HTTP requests to Firebase, you had to send them to the endpoints made available by the real-time database. And that allowed you to do one thing, post data to the Firebase database or read it and so on. But always you had to run code or essentially work on the database. Now you can create any API endpoint you want that runs any code you want. And that is also an example I will show you. So this is a cool feature that allows you to create API endpoints or RESTful endpoints without having to write all the rest like a router or anything like that. So you can build a serverless RESTful API. These are the event sources. That is what Firebase is all about. Now in the next video, I want to have a look at using cloud storage events, fire database events and HTTP events. So let's have a look at all of that over the next videos.